What's the weird thing that was generally accepted 20 years ago? People dying of chronic myeloid leukemia. 20 years ago it was 100% fatal in less than 5 years. Now it's treated with a once a day pill with no side effects for most people. Miracle science right there. Paying $0.25 per text messages. My high school had an area that we were allowed to smoke. A designated smoking area for kids under 18. My school still has that actually. We call it the smoke pit. It's outside the school. Just across the parking lot. They don't condone smoking. Now it's mostly vaping. But they say they would rather have teens smoke outside than in the bathrooms. Smoking around your kids especially in the car. I always got bronchitis. This thread just proves that something we are doing nowadays will be considered effed up in 20 years time. But we don't know what. I feel like this maybe was longer than 20 years ago. But I distinctly remember restaurant hosts asking if we wanted to sit in a smoking or non-smoking section. No care or concern for concussions and sports. I was knocked out cold for 2 minutes on the football field. Nobody told me, and when I came to we just resumed the game like nothing had happened. I didn't even know I was out for those 2 minutes until a year later, when people were telling football stories. I thought I had just gotten knocked down, and got back up right away. I thought it was weird everyone was making such a big deal about it. My first ever depressive episode started almost immediately after that game. In middle school a student dressed up like an SS Nazi for Halloween. Nobody said anything until my choir teacher told him that some people may find it offensive. Teacher was Jewish. Agreeing with your friends to meet at a specific place at a specific time, then sticking to it because you had no way to communicate in the interim. That OxyContin wasn't habit forming and it was a miracle drug. I specifically remember. Having health classes in 2001 talking about how it's a terrible drug and you shouldn't take it, even if the doctors give it to you. I specifically remember getting prescribed that drug, circa 2001, for wisdom tooth removal as a teen. I also remember a few other kids at school would ask to buy extra oxy whenever someone came in with chipmunk cheeks figuring they'd had dental work. I personally was high af off oxycontin for like 3 days while taking it back then. Way too enjoyable for the level of pain I was in. Tylenol and ibuprofen would have been sufficient. Subsequently I've had a major surgery. And was only given a combo opiate. That had like one quarter the dosage of oxycodone that's in oxycontin. That was sufficient. The fact that I got handed oxycontin as a teenager willy nilly. When it isn't even warranted after major surgery in adulthood. Tells me a lot about how over prescribed it was. Watching Doppersig makes me really pissed off. I know some kids that got addicted to opiates beginning in high school and did unthinkable things to pay for their habits such as prostituting themselves to pedophilic men. Purdue Pharma could never pay enough to make things right to all the people they harmed. I was a teenager in the 90s and I don't know if it was just round where I'm from but it seemed to be acceptable to be sexually assaulted at the shows. Fair ground for those not in Scotland. I went with friends every year from age 11 and it always happened. It was just kind of like struggle that's just what happens. Pretty sure this is just my area. Not 20 but 21 years ago they let me a former child enter the cockpit during a commercial flight. Going on road trips without a phone. That when a student beats the crap out of another student it somehow was not assault and could just be overlooked. I was never bullied real bad, but goddamn I saw some kids get beaten bloody and then the attacker would just get detention or a temporary suspension. I never saw a young adult have charges pressed against them like they would today. I guess maybe it's because today people tend to record fights more. The victim always gets the worst. I was bullied in school and the bullies never got more than a detention. But when I retaliated they decided to give me a suspension. That was just 10 years ago. So I can't imagine 20 years ago. If it was worse. Not password protect your devices. While it's true. The need for it was also drastically lower. There were basically no online services or anything of the sort. That would have required you to actually use any personal data. The only thing I remember happening was. That you needed to scan copy personal documents. And for that there were apps like password safes today. Essentially password protected folders. 
In hindsight the web and devices used to be a lot more anonymous in general. Everything was like Reddit where you just chose a nickname and there were no connections to anything else you were doing. Being at home at your TV at a certain time to catch a show. And expecting everyone to leave you alone. So you could watch it with no interruptions. You could be out with friends and you'd look and say oh it's 7.30 I got to get home to catch my show. And nobody looked at you like a strange social outcast. I guess it's still true with sports. Casual sexism and homophobia. I mean, neither are still great. But it's amazing how far we've come in that regard. Mockery of the mentally handicapped was pretty common in 2000s comedy. Leaving your young kids unsupervised most of the time. I remember at 5 years old sitting in the parking lot of the bowling alley in my dad's car for 3 hours while he was inside bowling. Also, most of the time, my parents had zero clue as to where I was. I would leave the house in the morning on my bicycle and be home for dinner. Sweeted them just fine. My parents would leave me locked in the car, waiting, while they ran errands. I was 6 or 7. Granted, this was the 80s so outside the timeline, but it was totally normal. I read a book, or played with my toys, while I waited. If it was hot, they'd crank the window for me. Nobody ever bothered me or reported them, because it was normal. This also wasn't a small town. This was Miami, in the 80s. Leaving the house, and going out into the city with no way to contact your loved ones besides payphones. Talk shows like Jenny Craig would have my teenage daughter is out of control episodes. The girls will talk about sleeping with men in their 20, 40 s, while the girls are 12 to 16. The attitude back then was to call the girls sluts. Few acknowledge that these men are predators. Even a prime Jerry Seinfeld dated a 17 year old. Super creepy. Of all the women in the world, Seinfeld dated a 17 year old. Sexual harassment in the workplace, it was just starting to become a topic of conversation around the early zeros, but very little progress had been made. I worked in restaurants back then, and the amount of harassment I and my other female coworkers endured was unreal by today's standards. We all just learned to laugh it off, because no one took it seriously. Female celebrities and actresses with eating disorders such as anorexia and gilimia, it's less prevalent now. But dang was it brutal back then. Since 20 years ago was 2001, I'd say the fact that sexualizing and exploiting young blonde teenage girls for profit in the music business was normal and generally accepted was pretty messed up. I worked in Saudi Arabia as a civilian contractor in the early 80s. Two Filipino house servants knocked their employer unconscious, assaulted his wife, stole all they could carry from his safe. Then tried to make it out of the country when they were caught. The Sodas shut down all TV networks on Thursday night. Had these two go through a recreation of their crime on national TV. Then on Friday, their holy day, in the public square in the city I was working in. They were beheaded. I made it through seeing the first one. Couldn't watch anymore. The crowd treated it like a Super Bowl. The degrading way female celebrities, particularly pop stars, were talked about in the media. The early 2000s coverage of Britney Spears in particular has been a hot topic lately. For example, a lot of people have been looking back at that and going hey what the f. But it's really hard to explain to people who are 20 and younger just how common that was and how casually it was done by even reporters slash media figures who were, and many who still are, considered respectable. Just absolutely vile, casual, dehumanizing misogyny. High school girls dating much older guys. I remember being like a junior or senior in high school, and my friends had fake IDs, and would go to clubs and parties in the city, and tell me all about how they got f at by some guy in his late 20s or even older. This wasn't just my friends. A lot of girls did this. The club was just a big part of socializing once you hit a certain age. A lot of girls had boyfriends in their mid 20s. You would often go to parties and the age range would be like 16 to 30, with nobody caring that much about age. Today, I have two teenagers, and the culture is just so radically different than how it used to be. My daughter told me even a 20 year old and a 17 year old is often looked at as weird nowadays. Even just besides romance, big age gaps don't happen socially anymore. My daughter doesn't really socialize with anyone outside of her immediate age group, 17 to 18. It's seen as strange, and she says nobody at her school really does.